For now, though, uh, let us go to our uh, first guest of the day, who, as I said, had a massive win over the weekend at Creator Clash 2, uh, very famous in the world of pro wrestling. This was his pro boxing debut. You may know him as John Morrison. He's also been known as, wait for it, Johnny Blaze, Johnny Caballero, Johnny Elite, Johnny Fusion, Johnny Hardy, Johnny Impact, Johnny Mundo, Johnny Nitro, Johnny Onyx, Johnny Spade, Johnny Superstar, and other names. But uh, on Saturday against Harley Mornstein of Epic Mealtime, he was just John Hennigan, and he won via knockout in very impressive fashion. Here he is, the former WWE superstar, now pro boxer, John Hennigan. Hello, sir. How are you? Thank you very much for having me. Uh, I saw a lot of memes that said Johnny Knockout, Johnny Hands, Johnny Clash. Um, you did pretty good with the John-based ring names. I mean, you got like 15. Yeah. Uh, if, if I ever do an interview and anyone ever names like the, the 90 or 100, I, I don't know how many there really are. Yeah, I was but just going to ask you. names all of them, they get a, a check plus. Okay. Well, I, I hope that I got a check at least. How many do you think there are? Are there over 20? Like, is this a thing? Um, there's, there's way over 20, but there, it became a thing where like, um, if I'm wrestling for, uh, pro wrestling religion, my name is Johnny religion, PW revolver. I'm Johnny revolver uh, pro wrestling ultra. I'm Johnny ultra. So like I'm, I'm talking about now there's like dozens and dozens, maybe even hundreds of small independent feds all over the world that I've showed up at as Johnny five star or Johnny Blackcraft. Johnny. Oh my gosh. I, by the way, I like Johnny knockout better than Johnny creator clash. I th- I feel like that sounds a little bit better. So maybe you could stick with that. The only problem with Johnny knockout is the, uh, the women's division in impact are called the knockouts. That's right. Yeah, that is true. Which I guess could be the worst thing if I wrestled them for the rest of my career. That is true. Like Andy Kaufman, who, who went up against the uh, women intergender champion. Um, all right, obviously, you know, we know you from many, many years in, in WWE, massive star. Actually, the first time I, I, I remember Tough Enough, and you know what I always remembered about you on Tough Enough? Uh, I believe Booker T was there, or maybe someone was there, and they asked you to do the spin a Rooney. And do you remember this? You didn't know what the spin a Rooney was, and then they were like, oh, how do you not know what the spin a Rooney was? But you were so good at breakdancing and all that, and you're like, oh, of course I could do that. And you did it on the spot. Do you remember that? How could I forget? Okay. Um, <laughs> there, there, there's like... Such things as flashball memories, I think, that, that stick with you. And that's definitely one of them. And I kind of knew what a spinner was, but I wasn't sure. And then so I just um I'd been hitting uh breakdancing competitions in um like in the Bay Area in Northern California. So I just busted windmills and um that was not what they were looking for. No, you kept going on and on and on, but I thought it was impressive that you did it on the spot. So you didn't know anything about pro wrestling when you got into the business. So I was I was a diehard wrestling fan as a kid. Okay. Um, I, I went out for high school wrestling because I watched wrestling as a kid. And um, after we watched wrestling, we would beat each other up in each other's front yards and backyards. And I wanted to be able to beat up my friends. <laughs> and I did when I started doing high school wrestling. But um, for, for some reason, no one in my circle of friends or school or anybody that I knew was seriously considering a career in professional wrestling. Okay. I... Um, <laughs> This, this, I was not close to this, but I, I thought I was going to be an Olympic wrestler <laughs> for a while. Wow. And um, I, I just thought, you know, you, you you go to college, you pursue something, um, you get a career. And um, it wasn't until I saw it tough enough that I realized, you know, I've, I'm going to school, but I'm actually spending six to eight hours a day training, <laughs> um, breakdancing, gymnastics, capoeira, uh, jiu-jitsu, kung fu, all these different things. I changed my major to film to make action movies. And pro wrestling was like the my first love and the perfect combo of everything that I'd been working on. And obviously you had the great run and a couple years ago left. Now, how how did you end up on this card? Like, how does the boxing thing come about? So Creator Clash 1, um, I went to because a buddy of mine whose handle is Dad, a uh, real name, Nathan Barnett, I've, I've known him, um, done comedy videos with him off and on now for know, 17 years. He started telling me he's having a boxing match. And um, I remember thinking, uh, really? I'm a little worried. And um, I, I came, he came over to my house a few times, and um, I didn't really know how to box. But um, I have boxing gloves because I do a lot of uh, movies and stunt choreo and some fight coordinating stuff. Um, it's just different because it's it's almost like a dance when you're doing choreo. And um, 
I was impressed with how far he had come. And then I went to Creator Clash 1, was in his corner, and was blown away by the, the people and the electricity in the building. And I think that after Creator Clash 1, when Harley knocked out uh, Aaron, they were looking for someone to fight Harley for Creator Clash 2, and they ended up asking me because I'd, I'd, I'd met everybody, and um, I guess I didn't mess it up. Yeah, no, it worked out well. Did you say yes right away or did you did you ponder if this was the right thing? Okay, for you? so to be honest, I said no because I know two people in the YouTube space. I know Nathan and Harley. Harley and I go way back. He you do? interviewed me from underground. I can cons- I considered his friends. So I said, um, you know, I I'd love to fight someone. Like I, I want to fight someone that I, I don't know or not my friend. And then they told me that Harley said that he would fight me. <laughs> Wow. At which point I said, okay, fine. Well, I'll fight him then. Did you hit <laughs> him up? And Harley later told me that he didn't say that. Oh. We just got kind of like pitted against each wow. other. Wow. That was sneaky yeah. on their part. It was well played, very promoter-esque. But, okay, when you when you found out that he said yes, quote unquote said yes, did you hit him up and say like, man, I thought we were friends. Why do you want to fight me? Although he texted me when I said, I don't know if I want to fight you. He texted me back and it just he just wrote... I don't know. This might be too epic. Interesting. And when he said that, and I called them, I was like, oh, uh, well, if he's fine with fighting me, then I'm fine with fighting him. I'm like, I'm going to box. I'm, I'm going to train and I'm not planning on losing. I'm planning on knocking someone out. And if he's okay with that, then okay. How long did you train for this? About four months. And, um, wow. It, it was it was tough. Like the last uh, so the last month um, leading up to Creator Clash, I had about eight professional wrestling shows. I wrestled, uh, for example, April sixth, New York; April eighth, Philadelphia. This weekend, April twenty second, I'm going to uh, Wisconsin. April thirtieth, I'm in St. Louis. Next week, I've got three shows: L.A., L.A., Montana. I. I wasn't able to stop uh, my pro wrestling schedule because um, it's kind of like my job. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you don't get paid to train. Like they, you, you do get a stipend to cover training, but it's not enough to just say, like, okay, well, I'm going to take four months off. Right. Um, I, I wish that I was able to take a little more time off. Um, but I think I, kind of got like a little upset and because i was upset i started training harder with a little bit more of a vengeance why were you upset and it ended up working out what were you upset about um i was upset because i felt like everyone on, on this event had taken like two or three months off to do fight camp and they were just training and eating and sleeping every day and i was flying around the world i mean i was in australia in March for uh, six days. I was in the UK in late February. I was just kind of flying all over the place, jet lagged. And um, I just made a point of when I got to Australia, no matter how jet lagged I was, I found a punching bag and just angrily punched it until I couldn't punch it anymore. Wow. And and, you, and um, your head coach was Josh Barnett, the, the legendary MMA yes. fighter. How did that happen? How did you link up with him? Um, you know, Josh been, has been involved in professional wrestling for a long time. Um, I've trained MMA with him off and on for years. And oh, okay. I'm not for, sure if you're familiar with uh, one of the greatest movies about bounty hunting ever made in 2014, uh, Boone the Bounty Hunter. Um, we shot it in 2014. Well, uh, Josh agreed to play at the small part in Boone, and we had a little fight scene in that. And then... Um, I've just always been cool with Josh. And um, when it came time to ask a coach, a lot of people had recommendations. And I thought to myself, um, Josh knows how to win. He's had some dirty boxing fights. He's had over 50, actually well over 50 MMA fights. Um, he, he beat Randy Couture for the title and he's 24. Like this, this is a guy that knows how to win. And um What we're doing is um, we're both learning how to box and we're both trying to win, knock each other out. This isn't a, uh, an elite level thing uh, yet. Maybe my next fight, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, but but the, the point is um, I felt really comfortable because Josh 
knows my background, knows pro wrestling, knows my strengths, knows my weaknesses, which according to him was boxing. <laughs> and um, <laughs> was able to kind of tailor make this, this program to fit me. And there was no uh, period of time where we had to get to know each other. Okay. Um, I understand that when you were there on site, um, is, is it is it accurate that Harley's mom came up to you and was like, you know, please don't kill my son? And uh, when that happened, did that make you feel okay. weird about what was going to happen? So I'm having breakfast with Josh on a Friday after the weigh-in. And um, the lady taps me on the shoulder and I look and um, she's like, Hi, I'm Harley's mother. Uh, I just want you to know that my son Harley is a very, very good boy. Uh, I mean, he he's just a, a big teddy bear, and um, please just don't hurt him. Oh. And um, I said, you know, your son is a very good boy. He's also a very big boy, and I, I kind of think he might be trying to hurt me too. Yeah. And she's like, oh, and I was like, we're, that's we're going to try to hurt each other. I mean, we hope that no one is hurt after this, but like punching hurts. <laughs> If you if you box you you get hit. If you swim you get wet. That's what we're doing. Right. We both got hit. And um I'm I'm glad that we both ended up okay. Um a little sore, but fine, you know, no permanent damage. Um and, and what a what an ending. You knock him out. First you you knocked him down, he fell out of the ring, you rolled out, then you knocked him out cold uh in the third round. Were you expecting that? To knock him out of the ring? No, no. just just to just to, to stop him. Like, did you think you would knock him out, or did you think this would go the distance? Um, I thought I would knock him out. I uh, that's what I was planning on. I I don't know if you saw the fight. I feel like I clearly started. Um, I started okay, but then I just started swinging way too fast and started kind of blowing up a little bit and having to focus on my breathing. Um, boxing is hard. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, I think one of the key things that Josh had me do a great deal of was sparring, and um, the people that I sparred with like just you know, beat beat the crap out of me, uh, liver shots, head shots, knocked me down, knocked me out once or twice. Wow! Um, but like uh, I I feel like, and according to Josh too, like that's kind of if you go into a fight without having that experience you don't want to get hit that hard for the first time in the fight mm. because of panic. And I'd already been hit. And I know the difference between like, okay, if I'm seeing stars, I need to, I need to circle. Um, if, if I, my legs are wobbly, I like, I really need to circle and then figure, figure out where I'm at. And um, there's also just such a thing as damage. If it hurts, that's damage. And that doesn't matter mm. after the fight. Sure. But not during the fight. So what kind of people were you sparring? Like actual pro boxers or, you know, influencers? Um, like what kind of people did you bring in? Uh, so a, a uh, so there's a pro wrestler named uh, Royce Isaacs, who I wrestled at Bloodsport. Um, <laughs> he's the, a, a big dude. He played uh, college football, college wrestling. And um, I wouldn't say he's a pro boxer, although he's been boxing for a couple of years and he's way better than me. And he's... Also, like, you know, he's like a brick shit house. He's he's a young, strong dude. He's like two thirty. He's he's throwing <laughs> throwing weights around. He doesn't get tired. Um, I sparred him. I sparred a buddy of mine, Tiger, who's a Golden Gloves guy. Another good of mine, a uh, buddy of mine, is a stunt guy, Michael Phillip, who's um who's smaller, but um, is like <laughs> frustrating because he's so quick. I, I just. I don't think I hit him once in the three times we sparred. Um, and I sparred Josh a lot. He was very nice to me, thank God. A buddy of mine, Jason Jenkins, who was uh, 6'6", gave me an approximation for how tall Harley was. Right. And um, I just kind of stepped in also with a bunch of the influencers, Hungar, Alex Wasabi, Jarvis, Aaron Hansen. Um, I just tried to get as many looks as I could. That's amazing. Um, the walkout was also amazing. Um, and all the people, all the, the, the legendary names from pro wrestling that you had with you from Hacksaw, Jim Duggan to LA Knight, Karrion Cross, Scarlett. Um, I'm, I'm Vic Joseph, I believe was there a ton of other people. Uh, how did that all come about? Um, I became really good friends with Hacksaw like 16 years ago when we met on raw. Um, I think both of us were just kind of having a real crap day. And um, 
we ended up you know, having a short combo that day. And then the next week we sat down at then catering and talked for like two hours. And then ever since then, we, we've just been tight and there's waves in wrestling. Like um, he was there. I got let go. He got let go. We bumped into each other a lot in the independent wrestling scene. He was back. I was back. And um, he's a, he's just a, a real fun, fun loving guy. I'm friends with his wife. He was the first person that I asked because I thought it would be really cool for him to come out to this um and cross all, all, the people that came out to this are, are friends of mine that i've known for a really long time mm. um and me and cross go back to i don't know if it was impact or triple a he was in uh ty and i's short film the iron Sheik massacre uh -huh. um which is a was a demanding shoot um super panda was in that also so is pj black la knight and i go back to impact me and swagger featured a bunch on uh <laughs> WWE like 2008 2009 I went to Vic to Joseph and Mackenzie's wedding in uh Italy just this past October um these are all just good friends of yours that came out to support you which is awesome yeah and, and a lot of wrestlers live in Florida which right is convenient. yes except um, for I actually flew out for this yeah. what a legend what an absolute yeah. legend um and afterwards you said you want a KSI is this a real thing like do you, do you a want to continue boxing even if you don't get a kid, because he's fighting May thirteenth, it's not that far away, so it could happen. And 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 B, like, do you think that you are actually in the running for a KSI type of name? Uh, I don't see why not. Um, you know, it's up to KSI. I mean, like, I, I understand, like, he's probably going to take a fight that he thinks he can win, and maybe he'd be a little bit nervous about fighting someone with the uh, with my power and speed. Um, I know he wants to fight Jake Paul. I've heard him talk about retiring and things. Um, but this actually was something that I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed testing myself. Um, it, it, um, KSI, I think, uh, is is the best uh, boxer in the Misfits organization. Why I'd be, which is why I'd be excited about fighting him. Um, Jake Paul's such a hand job, man. Like, <laughs> it'd be it'd be it'd be fun to fight that guy. Um, I feel like I've got some work to do to catch up to Jake Paul, but I don't think that's impossible either. We got Jake Paul, Nate Diaz coming up. What do you think on that one? Uh, as far as who's going to win? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard. I mean, Nate is, uh, typically fighting at 170. This is 185. Uh, he's the better fighter. Uh, he's never had a pro boxing bout before. I'm shocked that he's such a big underdog as of right now. Uh, I when think his manager, when well, Jake, uh, one of the guys that works with Jake, works for Creator Clash, told me that Jake and Nate were fighting, and I immediately he's like, Nate's gonna throttle him, and he's like, oh, it's boxing, and I was like, oh, I mean, okay, yeah, MMA, Nate would throttle him, boxing, I'm, I might hand it to Jake, like Jake's just been training pure boxing, mm -hmm. and this is gonna be Nate Diaz's first time doing that. Nate Diaz though and his brother both are cardio machines and um, have been fighting for their entire life, and they're scrappy. You're a big I'm MMA really fan. Good. You know these guys. You follow MMA. Uh, out of Stockton, yeah. Um, I, did a, I did the Stockton Con actually not too long ago, and I like randomly happened to into a crunch and trained with this dude named Rob the Boxer who was the sparring partners with those guys. Oh, wow. And uh, also, randomly, I approached both of them to be in Boone <laughs> as uh, like some of the the bad the main bad guys, but timing didn't work out. They have a like pretty full schedules. Um, I can't say I know them. I'm fans of them though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, have At people hit you? Conor McGregor's playing touch butt in the park with a hippie command. Wow. Okay. So you go. I mean, you, your knowledge is deep. Respect. Respect. I didn't know. Um, have people hit you up since Saturday? I mean, I feel there's all these influencers, you know, misfits, this, that. I've, I've, I feel like there's now a demand for you now on these cards. Um, I've, I've reached out a little bit. I haven't heard anything back yet. I mean, it is uh, it is pretty fresh, pretty yeah. new. Tell you what, if you know anybody, let me know. Okay. Um, I, I do want to, like, I, I, I am aware of the fight that I had. Like, I, I don't want to fight Gervonta Davis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like I, I, I feel like I can uh, improve and improve and get better. I feel like I could knock out Jake Paul, just not not this month or next month. Got it. Um, it it would take work, like anything takes work. 
But what I found about myself is usually when I focus on one thing and I put my mind to it, I get really good at it. Um, did you like it so much that you would ever drop wrestling for it and just do this full time, hundred percent? Um, no, because I love wrestling too. But the the thing is, like, I didn't. I don't feel like I would have to drop wrestling. Hmm. What I would have to do next time, though, is for a fight camp, then stop the wrestling. Right. But I don't think I have to retire or stop wrestling for good ever. Okay. How how is life on the indies since you left WWE? How how do you enjoy it? Um, you know, it's like such a trade because since I mentioned Boone a bunch, I spent uh, I don't know. I funded that personally. I sold my house to pay for it. I spent five six years on that trying to make it perfect. Um, Raw is live. There's almost no preparation. And 10 times more people watch an episode of Raw than have watched that movie. I spent all that money and time on it. Um, so that's cool. It's cool that a lot of people see Raw, but you are uh, undercut and forced to put out content that isn't nearly as good as it could be. It's What I've done on Raw is nowhere near my best. And um, people that think it's their best are delusional marks for themselves. Mm. They... Um, it is their best for the time they have, and that's a good thing. But um, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. I was a film major, and um, there's just a, a lot of things that I think could be fixed with WWE that never will be. Um, that's just not a thing. People who come in there with ideas of how to fix the the story wheels or like the, the script writing software or the, the schedule – they're fired. Um, so for indies, like, um, I mean, I'm going to wrestle as Johnny Caballero in, uh, at Dreamwave, the 10th anniversary of me versus Christian Rose. I wrestled this guy 10 years ago. Uh, we had a great match then. I haven't seen him in a long time. And, um, he's got a ton of ideas. I'm going to come in with a ton of ideas and it's going to be a collaboration with no overlord telling us what we can and can't do. Mm. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, what was your reaction when you saw that the company got sold? Shocked. Um, hey, do you think Vince looks like the ghost of Rick Rude or Walt Disney? I asked the questions around here, Johnny, all right? Um, come on, it, it, come it, 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 on. It's an incredible mustache. The hair, the, the, the whole look is the mustache just... mustache is on point, man. <laughs> uh, are you um, are you shocked to see was, this happen? I was, I was shocked. Yeah. I was shocked with the merger. Um, I think they're gonna. I think there's a hiring freeze right now. I think they're gonna end up letting a bunch of guys go. I think salaries are gonna get cut. Um, I'm really glad AEW was around to balance that out a little bit, because if they weren't, there would be just no leverage, nowhere else to go. Sure. And WWE and UFC would be this weird monopoly that just like wring the money out of the livelihoods of the fighters and wrestlers. And I always think that sucks. Yeah. Um, is for you, like if they ever called you, would you go back or did you not like the way it ended? Like, how do you feel towards them? Man, I, I, I hate that place, but like, uh, yeah, sure. They called me. I go back. Why do you hate it? <laughs> Uh, why do you hate it? Because it's your dream. It's what I watched as a kid. And then you you show up and you want to like live your dream and, and do do the things that like you dreamed of doing. But um, it's a, a bastardized version of what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Well, that was my experience. It's not for everybody. And um, I kind of uh, exaggerated the hate thing to like make a little joke about sure it. I'd go back. Um, I, uh, <laughs> I I try not to burn any bridges. Um, I, I love the roster there. I love a lot of people there. I love the roster of AEW. Tony, I like a lot. Vince, actually, I like a lot too. Um, I like all the minds in professional wrestling. Um, the place that I go next, I really want to have a good, honest talk with uh, whoever's in charge, whether it's Vince, Tony, the number one in charge of WWE, UFC, the merger, or Nick Khan, or wh whoever that might be. And um, find out exactly what they have planned for me. And hopefully they're honest. And um, 
if I don't like that, I'll probably not go. And if I do, I will. Mm. That's more important than the money for me right now. Um, what about the ego? Like when you when you're WWE, you're Raw, your your pay per views, all that stuff, and then you're doing you know indies in Montana and stuff like that. How how was that transition for you? I mean, yeah, it, it sucks. It, it like uh, that, that's what I mean. You get the creative autonomy to have this awesome show, and like like Dreamwave sold out um, in uh, Wisconsin this Saturday. But uh, it's sold out. It's going to be packed, probably 600 people, right? So it'll be a, a building that's going to be going nuts. But it's not going to be on TV globally. It's not going to be trending on Twitter. Um, the people that I went to high school and college with, like all my acquaintances, aren't, aren't going to see it or have any idea what I did. Um, so it presents an interesting quandary for an artist, right? Like what's more important, creating the art or having people see it in the validation? Right. That's a good, that's a great question. What do you think? What do you think is most important? The grass is always greener. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well said. Uh, have you talked to AEW? Sure. Yeah. Like uh, my wife is signed. She's been uh, there now. It's uh, I think her week five. She, uh, she flew out. Um, it was Wednesday. She flew out yesterday. Okay. She's been um, really happy there. You know, like, like Phoenix and Pentagon are really close to Phoenix was a, a groomsman at uh at her at her wedding. Eddie Kingston. Um God, like there's so many guys. Like I've always been a big fan of Mox. Um Swag clearly was was at the fight. Jericho. I name dropped Jericho on my diss track on Harley. <laughs> but I along with him at WWE, Max Caster. I've like uh grown to like over our uh Love, mutual love for uh, diss tracks and freestyle rapping, although he's way better than me. <laughs> um, Mark Henry, like they, usually the ro the roster at every wrestling show is pretty damn good. Hmm. I I'm a pro wrestler and I have a lot in common with other pro wrestlers, and I I, I like being in the locker room with guys like that. Um, I mean. It's tough to compare the two because you could say the same about both. Like, if I don't really care about uh, being champion or not, it's more about being used in a meaningful way. And if you're used in a meaningful way, either one of those places is a great place to work. Mm. By the way, we've had this debate: greatest diss track of all, of all time, greatest diss track. Oof. Um, you haven't heard the one I just put no, out. No, I, I don't know if you're. I don't know if you're going to mark out for your own gimmick. I, I mean, you're going to put yourself first. Of okay, sure. I mean, I'm a wrestler. I like, of course. Uh, <laughs> I mean, my favorite wrestler is John Morrison. Number two, Johnny Nitro. <laughs> no, um, yeah. I loved the Machine Gun Kelly diss track on Eminem. Then the rebuttal from Eminem just, just skewered Machine Gun Kelly, I think might be the best ever. It, it's probably like a very popular answer, but like, come on. Like that was, I don't know. It, my, was, it, was, it was good in so many, so many levels. Very solid. My, my pick is uh, Hit Him Up by uh, Tupac. Also a good one. I listened to a lot of diss tracks prepping for this. Okay. That got you in the, the right frame of mind. Yeah. And also creator clashes, like, it's a little tricky because, like, um, the opening lines of my thing were like, uh, um, dude, you consume so much bacon and soda that you stunted the growth of your own areola because he's got small nipples. Okay. But like, it's, it's more, like, lighthearted a little bit, like um, a lot of food jokes Yeah. versus, like, like I'm gonna shoot your mom. I'm a Sure, of course. I'm gonna shoot your car. I'm gonna bang your hose. Like, that, like... I don't know. I feel like it's more fun to be a little clever. If we, no, no, I get it. Especially since you're friends. And I'm, I'm assuming you're still friends, right? Yeah, and he was so damn nice. I was dying for him to say something mean to me so I could release yeah. this stupid diss track. He's just nice the whole time. Hopefully the next guy I fight says some bullshit and I can skewer him. Uh, I do believe they're going to do a third one. Are you a shoo in for that? A third creator clash? I don't think anyone's a shoo in for, uh, for any of the creator clashes. I, I do know that... Uh, <laughs> That the fight that Harley and I had was wild. <laughs> I, I punched him out of the ring. We yeah. like, like we were like, we were like kind of like wrestling, shoving. We were brawling in there, and um, uh, I think a lot of people really liked it. If I if I do Creator Clash three, um, 
I guess they'd have to find a, another YouTuber or a creator to fight me. I'm sure there's somebody that would. Yeah. Maybe the Liver King would be cool. That would be, oh, that would be fun. Liver King, oh man, that would be big. I, I got to say, um, you know, I'm I'm aware of that world. Uh, I'm not like super into it. You, you're I mean, you're, you're doing a real, a real fight podcast, right? Yeah, I mean... I mean but I love pro wrestling and I love boxing. So that, you know, you're still, yeah. you, both of you were the only names I knew on the card that I was aware of. Um, Har- I'm from Montreal as well. So I, I've, I've known of Harley for a long time. I've met him. He's a great guy. And afterwards, all I saw was your highlight. So you guys sold the shit out of that. And, and, and I hope you got compensated well. And I would think as a result, you would be a shoe in for the next one. Um, but let's see. I mean, I feel like it would, it would make all the I sense. Would, of the I world. legit think that I will be, um, if they can find someone who, who wants to fight me. Okay. I guess it's not that hard. I'm sure they could find somebody. There's like, a, like all those fight science guys that, that are YouTubers and are real fighters that would probably knock me out in a half second. <laughs> hey, what are your thoughts about uh, Salt Poppy? Oh, Salt Poppy. He's, he's a huge star. Well, you want him? He's fighting May 13th. Um, somebody in these, one of these guys, him, KSI, even that Sam Hyde guy, is he fighting still? I don't know who that is. Now you're, you've gone uh, too deep. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, it, it's funny. Sometimes like, um, I'm in this Island of like YouTube boxers and everyone on the creator clash card knows every single YouTube boxer ever. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I jump back into the regular world and you're like, what? Yeah. It is weird. It is this crazy I'm world. Brian Garcia, Terrence yeah. Crawford. Like, those are the guys. Yeah. But meanwhile, these dudes are selling out, you know, massive arenas. So they've got something going. It's pretty damn impressive. And I, I like that they thought outside the box by having you on there. So, uh, well done. Congratulations. I, I hope that we get to see you back out there. I'm glad to hear Harley's okay. Um, and uh, I'm glad that you guys are still friends. And, and good luck out, you know, in the wild of the pro wrestling world. Uh, have obviously been watching you for a long time, as I just mentioned with the, uh, the Spin and Rooney uh, affair to 2000, uh, what was it, probably 2002 that was or something like that. It's crazy. It's been quite the road for you. It's been over 21 years. Yeah. Let me leave you this. Like, okay. Some of the things. Um, Triple H... CM Punk, Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes. On Saturday, I did something that none of them could ever do. Let's win a real fight. (laughs) Suckers. And um, if KSI really wants to challenge himself, I can cut. I can get down to his weight class. I fought Harley at 212 and I was trying to stay big. I can get down to his weight, no problem. I'll tune him up. And he'll be up there looking at the lights. They'll give him the King Kong Bundy 100 count. I love it. Thank you, John. Great to have you on. Congrats. Thanks for having me. There he is. What a promo there. John Hennigan. Great stuff. Appreciate his time. And uh, that was a lot of fun.